stress and relaxation. Floating promotes a positive state of deep relaxation. We all know what stress is, but few of us really know what relaxation is. The deep relaxation found in the tank is so strongly felt that first-time floaters often comment on feeling truly relaxed for the first time in their lives. Many floaters have told me that they hadn't realized how tense they had been and felt before they started floating. We get used to it and think it's normal to carry around stress. The flotation tank gives us a way to compare our normal stress state to the stress-free state experienced during and after a float. Stress is controlled by the involuntary nervous system. Something happens in the external world and is interpreted as a threat by the part of the brain known as the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus releases neurochemicals. Neurochemicals are chemicals that carry messages between nerve cells in the brain and nervous system. The messages are various moods, emotions, and states of mind. Some of these neurochemicals go to the pituitary gland, which releases the hormone ACTH. This hormone travels through the bloodstream to the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands trigger the release of cortisol. Cortisol increases the blood sugar and accelerates the body's metabolism. Other neurochemicals flow directly to the adrenal glands, releasing large amounts of adrenaline, and we all know what adrenaline does. These chemical chain reactions are all directed towards one purpose, survival in a fight or flight response. It's an incredible way of quickly gathering the body's resources together for defense. In situations of real threat, we can respond with fight or flight and having discharged a large supply of the body's chemicals, find a safe spot to calm down and let the after effects of the threat fade away. But today, the threats are not as clear for us as they were for our hunting and gathering ancestors. Genetically, we're built for short bursts of stress, but not long-term chronic stress, like traffic, job pressure, and now terrorism, which has replaced the threat of nuclear war. We're in a perpetual state of indirect arousal. We can't always perceive the threat, but we know that it's there. Because our resources are diverting to dealing with all this chronic stress, our resistance to disease is compromised. Our resources become exhausted, depleting the immune system. As a result, the body's organs begin to break down, along with the shrinking of the thymus, spleen, and lymph nodes. The body also can't produce certain types of white blood cells. While the flotation tank works on stress relief in a number of ways, one obvious fact is that the environment itself removes you from both physical and mental stressors. In the tank, there's no noise, no light, no other people, nothing to do and nothing that needs to or can be done. The tank is the perfect spot to recover from stress. All outside threats disappear, your body slows down and unwinds, the chemicals that have strained your nerves are eliminated, and your body chemistry returns to normal. Your heightened arousal gives way to deep calmness and peace. Now, if the flotation tank was just a way to temporarily escape stressful external stimulation, then the, then the tank would be a passive tool. But the flotation tank is not passive. It's extremely active in its response to stress. Scientists have now proven that floating activates a physiological response as powerful as the fight or flight response. This response mobilizes the body's resources to bring about an active, alert, positive, and beneficial state of deep relaxation. Not only does floating greatly reduce the stress-induced biochemicals produced in the body, but scientists have found that floating has a strong long-term maintenance effect. All adrenal sympathetic fight-or-flight activity lowers for several days after the float. Floating was also found to lower the set point for stress, which means floating is a way of increasing our tolerance for stress. Brain waves. Floating enhances theta wave production, leading to creative, empowered states of mind. The activity of the brain creates cycles or waves of electrical energy. We've classified these brain signals into four groups. Beta is 13 to 30 cycles per second, represents our everyday awake state. 
alpha is 18 to 12 cycles per second, is present when the brain is alert but unfocused. Alpha waves are associated with feelings of relaxation and calmness. Theta is four to seven cycles per second, produces unpredictable but very vivid, almost lifelike images. Delta is one half to four cycles per second, is produced during deep sleep or unconsciousness. A baby is full of theta waves. As the baby grows, theta is replaced by alpha until the age of 10 or 11. After 10 or 11, beta takes over. Children still in theta become so engrossed in an activity that they seem to lose all contact with the external world. When we as adults rarely re-enter the theta state, childhood events return with astonishing clarity. Theta waves seem to signal the brain's readiness to process memories. Many psychotherapists have used flotation tanks in therapy because of the memory-enhancing quality of theta waves that floating produces. Many great discoveries have come out of the theta state. Friedrich Kekul vividly described a state of reverie in which he suddenly saw a mental image of atoms forming a chain and of snakes biting their tails. This led to the discovery that organic compounds form closed rings and has been called the most brilliant piece of prediction in the whole field of organic chemistry. Theta waves are hard to maintain because producing them leads to sleep, but floating makes the mind alert and the body calm. So the tank causes the floater to generate large amounts of theta, yet remain awake. The theta state has been linked to feelings of physical and psychological well-being, spontaneous improvements in personal relationships, social poise, open-mindedness, more acceptance of self and others, much more creativity, and generation of new and original ideas derived through intuition from the unconscious. Theta is awesome. As early as 1956, John C. Lilly noted that the state of not mind in the tank was hypnagogic, full of reveries and fantasies, with much visual imagery and many childhood memories and mental events that were surprising to the ego, all characteristic of theta waves. So how does floating produce theta waves? For the answer to this, we need to look at the reticular activating system. The reticular activating system, also called the reptile brain, is the alarm bell of the brain, which determines the arousal level of our awareness and attention. The reticular activating system distinguishes what is normal and what is out of the ordinary, and makes sure we pay attention to the new while allowing us to ignore what is familiar. A mother can sleep through a raging storm but wake to a whimper from her baby. Because of the sensory-deprived environment found in the flotation tank, there is no external stimulation. The reticular activating system is like a stimulus filter and is looking for any stimulation, but there is none. So the reticular activating system decides that the level of stimulation is too low, so it becomes much more sensitive and turns up the volume on all our senses. As a result, we be become extremely aware of our internal processes, like respiration, heartbeat, dilation of blood vessels, and so on. We're able to bring involuntary functions under conscious control, achieving a unity between the reptile brain, the limbic brain or autonomic system, and the neocortex, which is where our conscious awareness and voluntary control is situated. The reticular activating system also treats floating as a sort of sensory overload on some levels and responds by turning down the volume on certain functions, causing us to become deeply relaxed and mentally still. The floater is in a profoundly relaxed yet highly alert state of calm reverie, the ideal condition for producing theta waves.